independent sovereign state of Israel, putting the trial at top Nazi responsible for the execution of the final solution, namely the systematic murder of European Jews, and he, Gidon Hausner, is going to be the prosecutor. Come on. How much higher can you go in life? He must have thought about every single word very meticulously. I will not quote the speech to you. A, it's very lengthy. They used to make lengthy speeches at the time. B, I do not know it all by heart. But I know some major paragraphs, and I'll give you a short one, the opening one. Listen up, and we'll try to sort of dissect it a little bit. He said the following. At a place where I'm standing in front of you, judges of Israel. Can you hear the biblical echo? Judges of Israel, Shufte Israel. I do not stand alone. Six million prosecutors are standing by me, pointing a finger at the man in the glass cage. Eichmann was protected by a bulletproof glass cage. And saying, I accuse. Where does that come from? Dreyfus. Jacques, Emile Zola, Dreyfus, and the Semitic trial. By the way, if you want to be a little bit critical of Israel, look at the two references, biblical and modern Zionism. Like nothing in between. No Maimonides, no Rashi, no nothing. This is a classical Israel of the 60s attitude. Ancient history and us. Diaspora doesn't exist. Okay? It changed as well. But not at the time. He continues. They, the six million prosecutors, cannot utter the horrible words of indictment because their ashes are scattered throughout the rivers of Europe. Let me therefore be their mouthpiece. I'm now going to rely on your knowledge, no matter how limited it is, of the Bible, of the Old Testament. There is an occasion in an Old Testament when one man is hard of speech and another is his mouthpiece. Moses. Who is the couple? Moses. Moses and Aaron. I, I know you'll be able to rise to the occasion. Who is the greater leader among the two? Moses. Moses. Who is stuttering? Who is the mouthpiece? Moses. Aaron. Aaron. Well, Aaron, yeah. So what is Hausner saying? They are the accuser. I am only their mouthpiece. I am a mere Aaron to their Moses. We, the state of Israel, are a mere Aaron to their Moses. Wow. We were not ripe enough to listen yet, to understand what he had said to us that we here in the state of Israel should be proud to listen to the stories and speak for them if we can. It took 20 more years. But as the witnesses came on the podium to bear testimony, prosecutor general will not ask them, why didn't you? Speak up before. He will ask them, do you remember any more details, madam? Can you tell us what happened afterwards, sir? <coughs> Because their story is not a story now. Their story is now the testimony. And without their stories, there is no trial. And the Eichmann trial is the first gate through which Holocaust survivors get to speak up in this country without being criticized, and we listen. Many more changes will come in the 70s and in the 80s. I will not discuss them with you today. I want to give you one major reference in you, if you are interested in the topic. There is an amazing book that was published when it was the 40th anniversary of the trial, namely 2001. It is available in English. It's by Professor Hanna Yablonka. Y-A-B-L-O-N-K-A, Yablonka a professor of the Gregorian University History Department, available in Hebrew, come up. Its very original name is the Eichmann trial, so it's not very difficult to find. There are good excerpts of it free on the internet, and it will give you an inkling, not to the Holocaust, but to the impact of the Holocaust on this country through the Eichmann trial, okay? So by the 90s, we are ready 
to revisit the story and to know that that artificial separation that we have created between heroic heroes and pitiful victims is not the way to address the Holocaust. The museum you're going to visit this afternoon is a reflection of that change. You will not see that division. You will see a story that respects all Jews before, first of all, you get to know who they were before the Holocaust happened to them, and the variety of reactions that they had by hiding, by fighting, by being human to family members, by caring, by dying in the different periods of the Holocaust. I trust you will have a worthwhile afternoon today, and I thank you for coming to listen to me.